The three little girls sat by the fireplace, waiting for their father to come and tell them a bedtime story. He had said that tonight they were going to learn a very important story, and when they had heard this they were very excited. They waited and waited, staring into the fire to pass the time, and as they did they became drowsy and started to doze off. Then they heard a soft voice fill the room, and as it did images appeared to them in the fire. Before the beginning, there was a great emptiness known only as the void. The void stood static amid the great darkness as a cold, voiceless wind passed along the blank slate. But there was Daru, whose name none have been able to interpret, and who lived apart from the void, and stored up for himself a great treasury of being. And he looked upon the void and pondered all that he could do with it. And so he began his work. He stretched forth his mind into the void and sent out his most simple thoughts. Then he opened up the treasury, and his spirit drew forth his power like a great river flowing down a mountainside. And the river came to his thoughts, and they all opened their eyes and saw Daru standing above them on his throne. They were all happy, for they all saw their creator and they enjoyed looking upon him as one enjoys looking upon a fire when all around is darkness. There were six of them and Daru gave each of them a name, and each of them bowed before Daru and accepted their task with joy. These were the six children of Daru, the wisest and most powerful of all beings made before the foundations of the world. Daru once more sent out his thoughts into the void of uncountable number, each one different from the last, and each representing a different part of his mind. And once more the treasury was opened, and the power of Daru came forth like a great fire and burned at the heart of each thought. And they all opened their eyes and knelt before him in wonder. They could not see each other at first, for the light of their creator kept out the vision of all else. For the fire within them burned brighter, and the void about them was filled with light. And then they saw their brethren. Some saw farther and greater, while others only saw those near him, and even them unclearly. But all saw Daru. And Daru made for them a great hall, with his throne amidst them as a great feast was laid out before all the thoughts. And the feast brought them unto happiness in eternity. But Daru once more looked upon the void and the surrounding darkness, and once more he gained the desire to create. And so he called out, and his voice stretched deep into the depths of that vast primordial emptiness. His voice sounded about the darkness as a song came forth from the treasury, and ordered the voice of Daru so that each sound was in harmony, and the void was filled with water. But the song went about still and manifested on the countless powers of Daru about the hall, and they all opened their eyes and knelt before the throne of Daru, but only barely understood the thoughts that came before them. Among them was Nuthel, the wisest and farthest seeing of all the powers, and he alone understood the thoughts. And Nuthel said to Daru, Master, you called us. What would you have us do? While all the thoughts stood about the water in wonder at all that happened. Then Daru said to all who were present, I wish to show you what will happen with the void. I shall show the course of creation just as I intend it, and I have created you to bring about what you see. Then Daru called out once more to those primordial waters, and all turned and looked upon the water, for a section of it had begun to glow with its own radiance. Then the radiance brought about many different colors, and soon shapes and motions began to form, and the whole of history began to play out before them. Closest to the mirror were the powers whose eyes had just been opened. The highest among them were the six of the great powers, who stood above the other groups of powers, while Nuthil stood above them all, and he alone perceived all parts of the mirror, and understood all that was to happen. Above all the power stood the thoughts, whose hierarchy none have fully comprehended. But it is known that the first thoughts of Daru stood above them, with mercy and justice standing before even the throne of his great majesty. The whole company of heaven stood above the mirror and continued to marvel at all they saw. But one of the highest of the thoughts found a part of the mirror which disturbed him, for he perceived an abomination in the mixing of base and noble things. Therefore he descended to the mirror, unbeknownst to all his peers, and indeed unbeknownst to all but Daru himself. He came to the mirror and sought to correct what was surely a mistake, but when he touched the mirror, he found that the image worsened, and all the waters became turbulent. He grew afraid, for he knew that his peers might soon realize what he had done. Therefore he attempted to fix his mistake, but the more he touched the water, the more it became turbulent, and soon the waters began to grow murky, and their light began to diminish. He looked about for any place to hide, 
but only saw the glowing light of the song of the treasury about him. He began to flee, but soon the crashing waves of the ruined mirror swallowed him, and he saw all the horrors he had caused by his action. Meanwhile, the thoughts and the powers looked upon the mirror as it grew turbulent and murky, and many complained to Daru, Master, how shall we bring about your will when we cannot see our instruction? Daru replied to them, saying, Worry not, you shall only be judged on what you know. What you cannot see is not your responsibility. When you have come to the last point, you shall see what your task is. The rest of the mirror played out before him, as it became less and less clear what they saw. Finally, the light dimmed, and the mirror returned to the rest of the waters within the void. Daru drew the rebel out of the water in which he was swallowed and made him stand before all the thoughts and powers. He asked, What is it you have done? The rebel replied with caution, for he knew he lied. I saw a mistake within the mirror, and I sought only to correct it. There was no mistake within the mirror. All that you saw and all your peers saw was as I intended for my first act of creating. All that I showed relied upon my constant acknowledgement of it and ordering it to its purpose. Each tree, mountain, river, and grassland you saw within the mirror was put there by my direct command, and I wanted it not to move an inch to the left or to the right. But you do not wish to adjust a tree. You wish to erase something in the mirror from existence, one which all those who watched could see. Do you claim to know my plan better than I do? At these words, the whole crowd of heaven was silent before the voice of Daru. Not even the arrogant voice of the rebel dared to speak while his creator accused him. He stood before his master as a mute, unable to come up with a defense. So Daru said to him, It is not too late for you to make things right. You need only apologize for your arrogant action, and I will allow you back into my ranks, and you shall perform your tasks throughout eternity. And if I do not wish to comply, said the rebel, then all the horrors done to my creation, of which you have had only a taste in what you saw under the waters, shall come to pass, and their guilt shall be upon your head. For you may choose whatever you wish, but the consequences of your actions will not change. But you ordain that one of your highest beings, one even above me, should not only take the form of, but actually become one of those lowly creatures, and what's worse, you ordain that one of the worms, the very dust of the earth, shall give birth to this hybrid. If you must create such an abomination, at least let it come about through one of us. He looked around at the many companions and close friends he had made throughout the feast, and they appeared to have the same shock. Those worms are the lowest beings in kinship with all of you, and they, therefore, require the most help, for they are also my children. You shall be their protectors and ministers on my behalf, and you shall serve them as you serve me. For I created you to serve others, and you shall find no joy outside of this task. Your choice lies before you. You shall serve, or you shall be made to serve. The rebel stood with his eyes bowed before the throne of Daru, as he thought of all that he had seen beneath the waters within the mirror, and he contemplated all that would happen to the things that he loved within the mirror should he refuse. The fire within him burned ever hotter, urging him to turn back from his folly, but in one last force of will he said, I will not serve. All about the wind and the tone of the air seemed to change. It was as though the joy of the hall was severely lessened, and the feast made less fulfilling by the words, and the fire within the hearts of all those who listened seemed to burn less intensely. The air became cold, and the face of Daru went that from a worried father to a stern judge. If you will not serve, you shall rule. Your kingdom will be in perfection, and your domain all that is despicable. Mockery shall be your talent and suffering your joy, and thus shall you rule. The whole of the earth will be yours to command. Kings and lords from every people shall come to bow at your altar. But in this you shall find no fulfillment, and in your sowing of sorrow you shall reap no happiness. Then, after you have mocked my creation, until your kingdom is at its greatest and your rule at its height, when your worst deeds are done and my greatest creation destroyed, you shall find your power broken, and your kingdom brought to ruin. You shall turn from battle and find that in your will to dominate and control the very creation whose image you have destroyed, you have succeeded only to serve me more than any other could. Thus shall you serve, and this shall be your curse, and the curse of all who follow you throughout eternity. 
With these words he banished the rebel into what remained of the void called the Outer Darkness, and he fled with great haste to escape his master's wrath. Daru then turned to the many thoughts about the hall and said, If any of you have a share of his hatred in my design, then you must leave as well. For those who are against my will in the planning will be ever a hindrance in his execution. None dared to speak up, but many arose from their seats and left the hall to follow the rebel. Whether this was done out of disgust or the notion of serving, or out of a pact of friendship, none can tell. As they left the hall and moved further away from the light, they forgot all the joy they had known at the feast as they looked upon the mirror. When the light of the hall faded entirely, they began to fight and argue amongst each other concerning whom should be blamed for their misery. Within the hall, Daru then turned to the powers and said to each of them, I now give each of you a share of my creative power, and with it you shall bring about all that you saw within the mirror. But now, Behold once more the water, and they looked and saw within the water that a new light arose, and within it a small sapling was planted. The sapling immediately began to grow, and its trunk grew thick and strong, while its roots sprang out in all directions. Then the light around the tree expanded outwards and covered the whole space of the water where the mirror had been, now clean of all impurities. The roots of the tree sprang out in each direction, and others plummeted deep down into the water into the depths of that primordial sea. And they encompassed a great mass of water and disturbed whatever creatures were part of that first song which created the great encircling ocean. Soon the roots began to coalesce and wrap around each other, and this continued until the form of the tree was that of a trunk and branches atop a sphere. And the six of the great powers, who stood above the others witnessing the mirror, fell deeply in love with the tree and all the work with which they would do upon on it. It came to pass that each of the powers followed after one of the six and became their disciple, and they made ready to bring about their duty in creation. But the other, Nuthel, the ever faithful servant, was called by Daru as the powers began for departure. He sat by the throne as each chose their teacher, and thus none thought to choose him. But Daru shared with him all his secrets and all his counsels, such that none, not even the children of Daru, could ever share with him a greater part of Daru's mind. And Nuthel would remember all that he heard in this encounter, and would become the master of fates during his time on earth. Nuthel was then appointed the leader of the powers, and all the others were instructed to obey his commands and listen to his counsels. He then counseled all his peers to begin their work on earth. Thus the powers descended to the tree, and as they did the waters about them began to expand. The high heavens were closed off as the great hall went out of their sight, until at last they turned towards the earth and determined to bring about what they could with the utmost virtue. They looked about the world and saw that it was empty, and finally the water above them spread out into the vast depths of space, and they were immediately daunted by their task, for they saw that almost nothing was as it had been in the mirror. Then Daru sat back amidst the league of his thoughts and said, I have provided for their work only an image. It is up to them to bring about what they have seen. But that image was made when the whole of creation was stainless, whereas now it is impure, so that they cannot hope to bring about all that they saw. But do not worry, I have not abandoned them. I have given them an authority on whom they can rely. But now... I shall show you all the second mirror. For the first mirror showed my will for creation apart from evil. This will show you what will come about now that evil is passed into the world. Then within the center of the hall a new light shone, and all the thoughts looked at it in far greater wonder than they had at the first. A new series of events played out before them, and with each passing second they were horrified at what they saw. They slowly began to understand what the rebel had seen in those black oceans, and many knew not how Daru could rectify all that had come about. But as the images continued to pass, the thoughts all began to see how the various parts were coming together. Their hope continued to grow all the way through the final climax of the story as all things were rectified. At last, the end of the story came, and the thoughts all cheered at that last crescendo, and they agreed that the second mirror was far better than the first. Daru then turned to his children and called to them, Mercy, justice, henceforth your action shall ever be bounded and I charge you to go after the rogues and bring them to justice, and you shall stand as guardian over the world. As you will, so it shall be, they said, chasing after the thoughts who had left the hall. Now go, Duru commanded the rest of the thoughts, each of you to your posts, for it is time to bring about my will, that the first act of my grand drama begin.